Have you ever had a situation where you are working in Inventor and you need to export or or output some files that uh, you know you got some downstream clients need to use? So, for example, like you know PDFs or maybe some step files or you know DXF flat pattern files. Now, in Inventor, if you had to go look at, say, for instance, a DXF flat pattern file, if I had a um, a sheet metal component, okay, um, there is quite a process for it. So the process for you to actually get out a um, a DXF file for maybe manufacturing purposes would be to uh, you know sort of create the the component and then go and flat pattern it, but then or create the flat pattern and then go and create your your DXF from it. So I'm just going to go quickly drop something over here. So we've got I'm just going to create one flange just on that side. And okay. So now what we'd have to do from this is you'd have to go and you know create your flat pattern, which is that over there. And you'll see that I've got my folded model and my flat pattern model over there. Then what I need to do is I right click on the flat pattern and I say save copy as. And there you'll see that I'm able to create a SAT file, a DWG file, and a DXF file. DXF file over here, click on save, and then um, test. Click on save and then say exactly how it's going to look, what type of file version I've got, my DXF, um, the layer that I want, the parents, your line type, your line weights, what object is going to sit on, and even if you want it on or off. So, do you want your tangent lines? Do you want your bend lines? Your bend lines down? So, you know, all of that, and then just, you know, replacing spline, merge profiles into polyline. So all of that over there, you know, it's, it's quite tedious. And if you've got an assembly with, say, for instance, 100 uh, um, sheet metal components, that to create those DXF files will take you quite a while. So we've created, Micrographics uh, has created a, a tool uh, which actually sits inside the vault. So this is actually a very, very nice tool if you are working in conjunction with the vault and with Inventor as well. Now, the vault has to be vault work group or vault professional, please. I must, it does not work on vault uh, basic as you cannot work on the API for vault basic. So with this tool over here, we call it the vault uh, exporter and uh, it works on your life cycles and your job server as well. So if I go to my tools, you'll see there I've got my MGFX vault exporter. And if I go to the settings, let's see what we can actually do with this tool. So in this tool over here, I can see that I've got um, some export options. So for any part files that I take, uh, you know, that, that, I, that I want, I can create a step file or DWFX file. My sheet metal options is a DXF, and you can also create an INI file. So with that INI file is that options dialog box that popped up early on um, in the video. And you can also export the B side. So if you've got some engraving or anything like that, so maybe some pilot holes or something like that, in the opposite side, um, it will export both the, you know, your A side and your B side. And then you can either always export the B side or would say, no, don't export the B side. Or only when a custom I property is true. So you can say, you know, maybe a export B side property, yes or no. Um, if it sees that it's yes, then it'll export it for that. You can also add a prefix or a suffix for your B-side file naming. And for bomb structure options, you can also include your purchase parts. So you can actually put those purchase parts in over here. Then you've got your drawing files as well. So PDF, DWFX, and DWG as well. And then you can also export your assembly files in STEP or DWFX. The way that the file naming location works, you can either put everything out to a flat folder, a flat folder with uh, the file type, or vault folder hierarchy, okay? And then you can also, to your naming properties or conventions, you can also put in any of these pro I properties as well. So description, material, part number, project, quantity, revision, sheet metal rule, sheet metal thickness, stock number, subject, or title. You can also put in any custom I properties that you have created, as well as any parameters that you've um, exported or free text if you want to as well. Okay, so with that, if I go back to my vault over here, um, the way that it, it works is with the, let's close this, the way that it works is with your life cycles. So the, the way that I've, I've made this is that whenever I take anything from work in progress through to uh, released, it will then go open up the job server and go create that. Where's the job server, you might ask? So the job server is situated over here. So you've got your auto, auto job processor, sorry, there we go. 
And that job process over here basically processes any jobs that you don't want to have to go do manually. So I think it runs every 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and then, it, you, you know, you can, you know, sort of there you see now, because I've opened it up, it'll start running jobs over here. So, you know, it'll run these jobs, like say if it's creating visualization files or maybe syncing your properties, high properties in, in Inventor and Vault, um, so that you don't have to do it manually. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and take these first couple of files over here. Okay, so I've got a healthy mix of both part and um, drawing files as well. And I'm going to say, right, change my state. And I want to change the state. Okay, so you can see this basic release process. And I'm going to put it under, okay. And I'm going to say, right, I need it to go to released. Okay, so what it's going to do, it's going to process all of these in the manufacturing. Um, maybe I've put in description over here. Uh, send to the process to processor. Okay. Okay. So what it does there, it takes it and puts it into released state. And with that release state over there, I can now go to my job process and see what's going on. Now you'll notice there that nothing's actually happening. It's still idle. It's because of, you know, as I said, it, it, it runs every 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to go to my file, I'm going to go pause it, and then go resume. So what this now does then, it should kick in the, the you know, the, the, the processes that it's supposed to. And you can see there now it's synchronizing properties, and it will also go there. You see there, Autodesk Vault DWF create IPT. So it's now using the job process, or sorry, the, the Vault exporter to create all of these files over here as well. So if I go to the, the folder where I've asked it to export, you'll see there, there's the MGFX exporter. So, you know, when I was talking about how it's saved out, so in the first one, it would have been saved out just in one folder, you know, just dumps all the files over there. Then you've got the, you know, it dumps it into the MGFX exporter, but then it also puts it into its own individual folders over here. So the two folders that are, the two files that I wanted to do is PDF, and you'll see there, there's my TS084, TS085, 86, and 87. Okay, so it has been uh, exported out over here now. And I go off to my, my DWFX, and there you can see there's also um, exported these files out over here. Um, did I ask for any STEF files? Okay, and there you can see as well, it's also um, exported STEF files as well. So, you know, a very nice, quick and easy way just to export all those different files um, for use downstream. So you don't have to go in and do this individually for each file, whereas if you're doing it through the Vault and our Vault exporter, um, it's much easier to, to get the work done. Okay, so you can see there now that everything has been created from these um, IPT and IDW files over here. So I just need to go and uh, place it back into the vault uh, for you know tracking purposes, or I can send it off to the client or my consultant partner um, who's doing the project with me. Thanks very much for watching.